Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're talking tonight. Well, this is basically the season of Pentecost. Eh? We're going to reach Pentecost in two weeks now, or two weeks in a few days. And I want to focus on praising the Lord or worshiping the Lord and praying in, in the Spirit. I mean, speaking in the Spirit. So tonight we're continuing with praying in tongues, okay? And we're looking at the temple of the Holy Spirit for glorifying God. Amen. And who's the temple of the Holy Spirit? Us. Amen. Our bodies. The Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, when, when, when you... When you hurt your body or you do stuff bad, it's not, you're not doing it to yourself. You're doing it to the temple yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. This physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And there's a few places where it says that, but we're going to take a look in 1 Corinthians 6, verse, verse 13 to 20. Okay? And it talks about glorifying God in your body and in your spirit. So when I talked about, on Sunday I talked about how we are three parts. Amen? We are tripartite. Amen? We are a body. We are a soul. We have a body. Amen? We have a soul and we are a spirit. So the real you is a spirit. The real you. So actually the real you, you can't see. Amen? Why? Because that part of you is eternal. The real you is eternal. The spirit part. Because whatever you can see, the visible is temporary. So the real you, the spirit, is, is you. You are a spirit. Then you have a soul. This mind part, the will, the emotions, that's what you have. But it's not the real you. The real you is the spirit. And then you live in a body. Okay? You live in a body. So the same way, this temple... This physical body is temporary. We're going to receive a new temple, a new body. Amen. The Holy Spirit is going to have a new temple. The Spirit of us is going to indwell a new body when Jesus comes to fetch us. But while we live here on this earth, this temporary temple, this temporary body, we can worship the Lord with this temporary body. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you pray in tongues, when you worship the Lord, in this temporary body, what does the Holy Spirit do? He builds up. The Bible uses the word build up. He builds up this temporary dwelling, this mortal body. You can say this mortal temple, this mortal temple that can be hurt, that can be hit, or that can get sore or whatever. But when we receive an immortal body, an immortal temple that will last forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12 it says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So that ties in to what we talked about on Sunday where it's important to be led by the Spirit. Because even though someone else says this is good for you to do, or it's lawful, you can do this, it might not be good for you personally can be good for them, but it might not be good for you. Amen? So you need to be led by the Spirit. Like if someone might say, all children have to go to university. It might not be good for that, that your child. Amen? Or all children need to uh, do this, do rugby or whatever. Maybe your child shouldn't do rugby. Or what, it can be anything. It, it, it replies to your situation. Verse 13. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So who does your body belong to? To the Lord, to Jesus. Amen. And God, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. So when you pray in tongues, what happens? Resurrection power is activated in this body. Amen. And when you know you have a righteousness of God in Christ, and when you confess and declare it, that resurrection power is activated in this body, and it gives more, these mortal bodies life. Amen. Resurrected. Verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? 
Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Just check if this, yeah, it's on. Certainly not. Okay, why should you not do this? Because, or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So our spirits are joined to the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why when we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit and us are praying. But our spirits are praying. The real us, the real you is praying when you pray in tongues. Amen. But it's joined to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Paul says, do you not know that the same way that your spirit and the Holy Spirit is connected when you have sexual immorality, your body then gets joined to that other person and your flesh becomes one. Then it says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So this body belongs to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's why the Holy Spirit is the one who can tell you, eat this, don't eat that. He's the one that can tell you, do this. You know, when you're driving, go take this street. Amen. Because this body belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you need to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Why? Because they belong to God, which are God's. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So let's take an example, a type of... A type, because the, old, the Bible, the stories of Jesus, the stories of the apostles in the Old Testament are all types for us to learn from. Amen. But not just the story, it's also a typology which we can learn from. So now let's take a look at Luke 19 verse 45. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem, what was the first thing He did? He went to the temple. Okay? Or He cursed the fig tree. And then he went to the temple. And what did he do in the temple? Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who, brought, those who bought and sold in it. Okay? So Jesus went to the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Okay? So, it's amazing, many times when people make a declaration, like what did Jesus do? He declared that the fig tree should die. Okay? And then He went and cleaned out the temple. Okay? And what did He say? This temple should be a house of prayer. So when you make a declaration, because many people will make declarations and stuff, and then they don't see instant manifestation. But what must you do? You must clean the temple, because it needs to be a house of prayer. Amen. And then, when you've made it a house of prayer and you're praying, then your declarations are more powerful. What happened the next day? The fig tree died. Amen. So, who's the temple? We are the temple. Our bodies are the temple. Amen. And what did Jesus do? He took out the den of thieves. And then He said, this temple, this house, this body must be a house of prayer. Okay? So in Jeremiah 7 verse 11, it talks about this as a prophecy because Jesus saw this now. Has this house, this temple, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. So Jesus saw that the temple became a den of thieves. So that was a prophecy fulfilled. But now, this prophecy that's fulfilled, and also the den of thieves, refers to what's in your body. Okay? So what's a thief? A thief steals. A thief takes. So this can refer to, like, when something is in your body and it's taking from you, it can be a disease, a sickness. Okay? Something that's stealing, a thief that steals health. Okay? Or worry. Worry steals your peace. Okay? So you can think about emotionally. What also, your mind, condemnation kills you. It steals from you. Amen? You can think of, uh, joy that's stolen. 
beasts, all these things that are stolen from you, these den of thieves. So what must you do? You must drive them out. Who drives them out? Jesus, the Word of God. Amen? Jesus drives them out. So that the house can be, the temple can be, the body can be a house of prayer. Amen? This body is a body of prayer. Hallelujah. So in Isaiah 56, verse 6 to 7, it talks about how this body, this temple should be a joyful house, a joyful body of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. So this is a quotation that Jesus made. Okay, so Jesus quoted Isaiah 56. So Isaiah 56, verse 6, Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord. So we are joined to the Lord. We are one spirit with Him. Amen. Amen. Our spirit is joined to the Holy Spirit. To serve Him. So our body is not our own. What did, what did Paul say? Our body is not our own. To serve the Lord. And to love the name of the Lord. And to love the name of the Lord. To be His servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is not a day for us to keep anymore. The Sabbath is a constant for us to have. It's a constant to enter a rest constantly. So your default mode should be the Sabbath. You should be in the Sabbath for all time. You should be in rest for all time. Okay, because what's the Sabbath? Rest. rest. And what is rest? Rest is not inactivity. So most people, when they think about rest, they see themselves lying on the beach. You know, lying on the beach with a, like a, with like drinking something and Hawaii music at the back. Marina singing an opera song. Ah, you know? No. That's not, that's not uh, rest. Rest is not inactivity. Rest is spirit-directed activity. So we will talk about that more in future times. But like example in Isaiah 28, when it talks about this is the rest and the refreshing, then Paul goes, uh, uh, Isaiah goes on and says that precept upon precept. So what's that? Instruction upon instruction. So directed activity upon directed activity. So that's rest. Rest is being directed the whole time. Because, think about it, if you are sleeping when you're supposed to be doing something else, but the Holy Spirit told you, you're not in rest. Because you're not flowing with the spirit of rest. Amen. You're not flowing with the spirit of peace. Amen. So you are not in rest. So but even if you're not doing anything, so you need to flow with the Holy Spirit. Then you're in rest. Spirit-directed activity. Amen. You guys understanding? So you need to not defile rest. You need to be directed by the Spirit. And how, do you, how are you led by the Spirit? Through praying in tongues. Amen. That's the, that's the main way that you are led by the Spirit. Praying in tongues. Then it says, So you do not defile the rest and hold fast my covenant. And hold fast my covenant. Then verse 7, Even them I will bring to my holy mountain. So we'll talk about my covenant now. So keep that in your head. My covenant. Hold fast. Do not defile the rest. Say, not defile rest. How do you defile rest? Say, I can, I can follow my own instructions. I want to do this today. Okay? This is going to be the best thing for me to do. No. You need to be led by the Spirit. Then you don't defile rest. Amen. And then, hold, uh, hold fast. Hold fast. Say, hold fast. Hold fast my covenant. So God's covenant. Amen. Then, even them I will bring to my holy mountain. Which, which mountain is the holy mountain? Mount Sinai. No, Mount Zion. Mount Sinai is where the law was given the old. Mount Zion is where the new is, the spirit. Okay? So, He will bring us to Mount Zion. And what happened on Mount Zion? The spirit came. Pentecost, the Spirit came. Amen. The Holy Spirit was given. And what, does, what happens then when you're on Mount Zion, when you come to Mount Zion, when you receive the Spirit? And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Make them joyful in my house of prayer. So you, when the Spirit comes, you have the Spirit, you are a house of prayer. And a joyful house of prayer. And why can you be joyful? Because... You are the righteousness of God in Christ. And your transgressions and lawlessness have been taken by Jesus. Amen. He was crushed. He was beaten for your lawlessness. 
So you have the anointing of joy. You have the oil of joy. Amen. Then, then because, because you are house of prayer, joyful house of prayer, very burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. What's an altar? An altar is a place where you remember Jesus. Amen. You const- when you anoint yourself, you're constantly making altars. When you partake of a communion, you're making altars for all time. When you're praying in tongues, you're making an altar. Amen. And what's a burnt offering? Burnt offering, when you see burnt offering, you must always remember that it's you have a righteousness of God in Christ. Because how does a burnt offering come? But lamb is a divine exchange. Say divine exchange. It's a divine exchange. The lamb takes your sin, your lawlessness, and you receive the lamb's righteousness, the lamb's innocence. Then you burn the lamb on the altar. That's a burnt offering. So you have a righteousness of God in Christ. So your righteousness of God in Christ will be accepted. Why? Because of Jesus' work. Amen. And their sacrifices. What sacrifice? Just go read Romans 12. Your body is a living sacrifice. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For then, then this is where Jesus quoted, For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Remember, nations is Gentiles. Amen. Who are the ones praying in tongues for most? The Gentiles. Amen. Most Jews don't, don't pray in tongues. So, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, my covenant. He had to hold fast my covenant and not defile the Sabbath. So my covenant, we talked about, let's go to Hebrews 10 verse 15 and look at the covenant. So the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant. Say the covenant. That I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws. And like we said, law, the old has been replaced by the new, the Spirit. Okay? So, I will put my Spirit into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write them. So what will He write? The Spirit will write on your mind. He will give you the mind of Christ. Amen. So that's the covenant. The covenant is, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. And then He writes on your mind. Amen. He gives you the mind of Christ. But then, my covenant. Remember we said, hold fast to my covenant. Then Isaiah 59 says, As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant. Say my covenant. With them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. So what are we? The temple of the Holy Spirit, a house of prayer. Amen. Then he says, this mouth. This word that I give you shall not depart from your mouth. So you are a temple of praise, a temple of praying. Amen. And it shall not depart from your mouth. Because what's the mouth? It's the temple doors. Amen. If the temple doors are closed, then there's no praise going out. So in the Old Testament, there's the story of where they closed the temple. Amen. They close the temple. But as when you need to open the temple so that the praise can go, so the prayer can go out. Because if you close the temple, the temple gets defiled. Amen. If you close the doors, the temple gets defiled. And in the Old Testament, there's a story where they closed the temple doors and the temple was defiled. And then it, they opened the doors and for 16 days, it took them to clean the temple up. Amen. So many times you can pray in tongues and then you'll feel, okay, I've been praying for a long time and then maybe after 16 days you'll see and then you'll see a miracle happen. Amen. Amen. Okay. So my laws I'll put, my spirit I'll put in their heart. Amen. And I'll write on their mind. That makes me think of 1 Corinthians 14 verse 13 that we talked about. Where it says, when you pray in tongues, Amen. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue is to pray that he may interpret. So as you pray in tongues, what happens? The Holy Spirit writes on your mind. He interprets to you the words. Because you want to know all things. So when you speak all things, you will know all things. Amen. So as you pray in tongues, you interpret. Why? Because. So four is because. Because if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. 
So as you pray, you need to pray so that your mind can be fruitful. Amen. So that your mind can be productive, can be the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Paul said, so I keep on coming back so you guys remember, we have a, we have a temple of God. Amen. We have a temple of prayer. And that's why Paul said that he prayed in tongues more than all. Amen. He prayed in tongues more than all. Why? Then he says, because when I stand and I talk, I want my five words that I speak to be more powerful than a thousand words in tongues. You understand? So that's why when you speak, when you pray, then your authority and the power behind five words in your understanding will be powerful. Why? Because you spent hours praying in tongues. Amen. So when you pray in tongues, the more you pray in tongues, then when you speak from your soul, your understanding, even if you just speak five words, those five words will be full of authority and power and edification for everyone. Amen. So continuing. So then we, we saw the covenant. The covenant is I put my spirit in the hearts and write on their minds. Then continuing in the Hebrews 10 verse 17. Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. So when Paul takes Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59 verse 21, and he says that when put the words in your mouth is I take away sin. So let's take a look at that. Go down. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit which is upon you, and my words shall not depart from your mouth. Now go down to Romans. Romans 11. Now Paul says, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. You see, so he quotes from Isaiah 59. And Paul says that when you pray in tongues, then when I take away their sins, so he connects the two. You see, the same way that Hebrew connected the spirit in your heart, right on your mind, their sins are forgiven. Paul connects, when I pray in tongues, speak, the sins are forgiven. You see, so the fuel for praying in tongues is forgiveness of sins. Amen. So the more you forgiveness conscious, righteousness conscious, like we saw in Isaiah 56, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because they need to not defile the Sabbath, but hold on to my covenant. Amen. So you need to pray in tongues. So that you don't defile the Sabbath. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And what did we say? We have a temple of God. The temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Glorify God in your body and your spirit. So how do you glorify God? How do you glorify God? So, when you pray in tongues, you are glorifying God. Okay? Let's take a look at Acts 2 verse 11. So, after the Spirit was poured out on Mount Zion, on Pentecost, what did the people hear? They heard the people, speak, the, they heard the Jewish people and all the people in Jerusalem hold the, heard the disciples speak in tongues. Amen. And what did they say? Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. The wonderful works of God. So when you speak in tongues, the wonderful works of God is being proclaimed. And what are these wonderful works of God? It's the wonderful works of God that God does, will do, and has done in your life. Amen. Because the Bible says that God rested of all His works on the Sabbath. So as you are in rest, then God works. Amen. Because you are in rest. You need a rest of all works. So God works for you when you rest. Amen. Because not two people can work. If you are in, in the Sabbath, then you need a rest. So then who's going to work? God needs to work. Because He needs to receive all the glory. If you do all the work, then you need to receive the glory. Amen. Because the Bible says that if you work, then you need to receive a salary. Amen. Amen. But if it's grace... Then it's grace, it's not work. So when you rest, you are in the Sabbath, you are resting, amen? Then God needs to work for you. 
Amen. He needs to lead you. Amen. Amen. And then what happens when you pray in tongues? You declare the wonderful works of God. He's working for you. He's building the temple, building up your body, healing your mind, your soul, your emotions. He's building up your relationships, your marriage. He's building up and healing your finances. Amen. Restoring your businesses, whatever. Amen. Because He's working. And then Psalm 71 verse 19 says, Also your righteousness, O God, is very high. So your righteousness is very high. Amen. Jesus was glorified. He was raised up for us. He's seated on high. We are seated in Christ. Amen. The same way when, when Moses hit the rod, the rock, it was down below. Okay, That's Jesus who died for us. He was delivered up for our offenses. But then He was raised up for our justification by high cliff. What happened with the high cliff? Moses had to speak to the high cliff. Amen. Because it was high, lifted up. And when you believe that Jesus was raised up, then you have a righteousness of God in Christ. So Jesus being raised up represents our righteousness. So what does it say? Your righteousness, O God, is very high. Then, then it says, You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? So God does great things. Amen? He does great things for you. When you pray in tongues, you're declaring the great things God will do in your life. Amen. Because God sees the future. Amen. Like we said in James, in James we said a few weeks back, that when you pray in tongues, you're praying for your whole life. Your whole life. Amen. Every area of your life. So, when you pray in tongues, I said you glorify God. Amen. Say, I pray in tongues. Glorifies Glorifies God. So let's take a look at that. Acts 2 verse 26. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. Amen. So your body, your temple rests. It's the Sabbath. Amen. Rest is the Sabbath. My flesh, my body rests in hope. What's hope? A positive expectation of good. Amen. You're positive of good in your future, of the wonderful works of God in your future. And what you're doing, you're resting, the Sabbath. Then, your tongue is glad. But Paul, uh, Peter, is quoting from Psalm 16 here. Okay? Through the Holy Spirit, he's quoting Psalm 16. So my tongue is glad. This is referring to praying tongues. My tongue is glad. But what does Psalm 16 say about this verse? Let's take a look. Psalm 16 verse 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So the Holy Spirit and Peter says the tongue is glory. Is the glory. So when you pray in tongues, what happens? You are glorifying God. Amen. When you pray in tongues, you are glorifying God. That's why as the temple of the Spirit, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, when you pray in tongues, you're glorifying God in your body and through the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So, we can also check, even if, even if this verse wasn't here, and we saw that tongues and glory is connected, and this word for glory is kavot, okay? Which talks about that weighty presence of God, that weighty presence of the Lord, where when you walk into a, uh, into a room, Someone feels the presence of God on you. Amen. They will feel you. And also, like have you noticed, if you sit somewhere and people are drawn to you, they come to you, they want to speak to you. Amen. When you open your mouth, like Paul said, I would rather speak a thousand words in tongue, so that when I give five words in English, it will be weighty. There will be kavot. Amen. So the more you speak in tongues, the more kavot, the more weightiness, heaviness, is to your words and to your presence. Amen. Because the presence of God is upon you. So John 7 verse 37 talks about, and we'll see how the glory is connected to the tongue. Amen. To the Spirit. So let's take a look. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone first, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. 
So in, Acts, in Psalm 16, we saw that my heart is glad. Amen. My heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My tongue rejoices. So here you can see out of your heart. Your heart is glad. So then your tongue is glad. Your tongue rejoices. So here out of his heart. And where has the Holy Spirit been poured into our hearts? And the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So what does this refer to? The Bible says, But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So, like we said, when Jesus is glorified, when he was glorified, what happened? The Spirit was given. So there's a connection. When there's, when there's glory, the Spirit is given. Amen. And what happened? The glory was glad. My glory rejoiced. So my tongue was glad. My tongue rejoiced. Amen. So when Jesus was glorified, what happened? The Spirit rejoiced. The Spirit was glad. Amen. So the more you are righteousness conscious, say righteousness conscious. So the more you are righteousness conscious, forgiveness conscious that Jesus is glorified, the more your tongue is glad. Your tongue rejoices. Because why? Your heart is glad. Amen? Your heart rejoices. Why? Because Jesus took your place. Amen? So that you can receive His blessing. Amen? Jesus became a curse so that you can be a blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. So when you believe, go down please. So when you believe in Jesus, so what did Jesus say? Who receives the Spirit? When you believe in Him. Amen? And what must you believe? You must believe that you are forgiven and justified. Declared righteous is what justified means. Just, just as if I've never sinned, okay? Justified, declared righteous. So the Holy Spirit is given because Jesus is glorified. Amen. Therefore out of His heart will flow rivers of living water. And this can happen because Jesus was glorified. Are you guys following? Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus glorified and praying in tongues is connected. So the more you pray in tongues, the more you glorify God in this body and in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because why? You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And this body does not belong to you. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you guys understood and that out. Amen. Praise God. Let's partake of a communion. So this is part of a thanksgiving offering. Amen. Because we're thanking Jesus for what He's already done for us. Amen. We're saying thank you Lord Jesus that you for your work on the cross. And we do this in remembrance of Him. In affectionate remembrance of Him. And when you eat for body and drink for blood... You are doing spiritual warfare. Amen. The Bible also says this is the way of escape. Amen. So no matter what problem you have, whether it's in relationships, if it's in your body, if it's in your finances, any area, when you partake of the finished work of Christ, what happens? You're blowing the sound of victory. You're blowing the shofar. Amen. You're saying the battle is won and the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hold up the bread. Hold up the body. And say, thank you Lord Jesus. For your body. That was broken for me. Thank you that by your stripe. I am healed. And just look at Jesus. Remember Him. Remember is to reenact, to see how Jesus was beaten for you, how His body was torn apart, that every lash that fell on His body planted a seed or was plowed so that there can be seeds of healing in your life, seeds of deliverance, seeds of salvation for your mind and soul and emotions. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body. Amen. And hold up the cup of a new covenant. Say new covenant. Say my covenant. This is now your covenant as well, eh? Because the covenant is the covenant Jesus 
is our representative. He's our mediator of the new covenant. But you are now part of this covenant. So this is your covenant. The same way that Paul says, this is my gospel. Amen. Amen. When you say, I'm forgiven of all my sins, and they say, who says that? I say that. It's my gospel. Amen. 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 I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Who says that? I say that. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It's my gospel. So this is my covenant also. Amen. 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 You just see it as my covenant. This is my covenant. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So say, thank you, Lord Jesus, that I am forgiven of all my sins. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray in tongues. Amen. We have a temple of God. Amen. We have a temple of God. And the more you pray in tongues, the more hindrances are removed in your life. Like we said, when that fig tree was cursed, and we didn't, you don't see the manifestation immediately, what do you do? You cleanse the temple. You pray in tongues. Then what happens? The manifestation takes place. And the same way, the more you take in tongues, and there needs to be a fig tree cursed, the next time you'll say, I curse you, fig tree. And what happens? The fig tree will die. Why? Because those five words are full of authority and power. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray in tongues for a few minutes. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, You belong to God. You belong to God. You're, and then say, you're a beautiful temple of God. <laughs> so if you guys can't, didn't understand anything I said, just think tongue equals glory. Okay, and glory equals tongue. Okay, tongue equals glory and glory equals tongue. Okay, awesome.